Today we are starting a new series which is called Melee Fighting System. This is basically the same system that I'm using in my Rift of Nostaria game. I will also show you some animations and other tricks that I'm using to make the combat more flashy. What do you need in order to start this series? Basic knowledge of GDScript and Godot in general, as well as a very strong will to sit here with me and listen to my accent. Entire project, as well as all the assets that I'm using, will be available on my coffee page for free. We will start with a scene that contains level geometry and a player, as well as light and environment. You can just use the scene that I'm using or find some resources online. I will also link them in the description. I want to keep these videos as concise as possible. At the moment all you need for player is character body 3D and uh, camera 3D. We will be creating more nodes, of course, but that will be included later in the video. We will also need some geometry for the player to walk around. I'm using CSG nodes as they are easy to set up and control. We will start with creating our weapon. Import the model into the game and then place it next to the player character to see if the scale is correct. If it's not, you want to open the GLB file, change the root scale and re-import it. Once the scale is correct, you want to remove it from the scene. That's because we will be using only Mesh Instance 3D and not the entire sword model scene. All the necessary functions needed for handling weapon actions will be held in the Weapon Manager script that is a node 3D. This node will be a child of a camera 3D because we want our weapons to rotate along with our camera. We will also be adding a Mesh Instance 3D that will be our sword model, as well as area 3D and a collision shape 3D as a child of the area that will act as our hitbox. Make sure to name your nodes so you don't get lost later on. Mesh Instance 3D and area 3D won't be directly a child of our weapon manager, but another node 3D that will be called weapon. That way we can move our mesh and hitbox just by moving the weapon node. We want our weapon manager to stay in place, because we will be doing a support for second weapon later on and that will make things much easier. Now we will open a scene of our sword model and copy the mesh from it, then paste it into our mesh instance 3D. That way we will not be using an inherited object, but our new mesh. And also click make unique on the mesh. Now even if you remove the sword model from the project, the mesh will be still intact. We can even save this mesh in one of our folders, so that it's all sorted nicely. We will be using this mesh in later episodes, when we learn how to change weapons. You want to align the position of your sword in the camera now. You can use the preview button to check how it will look like in the game and then align it. I want to align it, so that it looks like it's being held in hand, and then I can create an easy attack animation. Keep in mind that I'm moving only the Node 3D weapon and not the mesh itself. That's because I want it to stay at the same place as the hitbox. After we are happy with our position, we want to create a collision for the hitbox. Next step is to add an animation player to our player node. If you have never used an animation player, here is how it goes. You create new animation and call it attack. Make sure that it starts at zero. Click the weapon node 3D and click the key next to both position and rotation. Click OK to create reset tracks. As the name suggests, they basically reset your animation to the starting point. You just created a starting point of your animation, that's called a keyframe. Next keyframe will be weapon in attack. Then last keyframe will be the same as the first one, as the weapon is held back. To make the animation more snappy, we want our attack to be shorter than our withdrawal. The amazing thing about animation player in Godot is that you can call functions from it directly. 
We will be using that to activate and disactivate our hitbox. Click on the Odd Track button, select Property Track and select our hitbox. Now in this window you want to select Monitoring. Monitoring is a boolean value that tells your Area 3D if it should scan for other bodies. So basically if it's off, the hitbox is off. And if it's on, our hitbox is also active. Now all we need is something that we can destroy. An enemy. I'll be creating a simple static body 3D with a mesh instance as a child. We will now be creating a script for Weapon Manager, but don't worry, it will be very simple. At the start, let's create a class name called Weapon Manager. It will help us organize stuff later on. We will create only one function that calls the attack animation to play. For that, we need the reference of an animation player. We can create it by holding Ctrl and dragging the animation player into the script. Once we have it, let's create this simple function. All you need inside is to call an animation player to play attack. That's it. We now need to add a signal from the hitbox. This signal is called body entered and it activates whenever an area 3D enters another body. Whenever our sword enters another body, it should destroy it. And we can destroy it by calling Q3 on the body, which removes it from the scene. We will be calling weapon manager functions from the player script. That means we need a reference for the weapon manager in the player script. We can create it the same way we have created animation player reference in the weapon manager script. That means holding control and dragging it. We want to call the attack function in the weapon manager by clicking the left mouse button. If you don't have the input for the left mouse button mapped yet in the project settings, here is how you do it. You open the project settings, click input map, write the name of your input, click odd, and then assign whatever button you want. It will be left mouse button for me. You need to create a new input event function. This function allows you to catch the inputs from outside the game, so that is your mouse, your keyboard or whatever other tool you are using. We will be catching our mouse button by checking is action just pressed attack and inside it weapon manager call attack. We can now try it out. When you attack an enemy, he is indeed dying. But there is a problem. At the moment, your sword will obliterate everything it touches. That's because we are not checking if a target is actually an enemy or just anything else. So we will queue free everything that is detected by an Area 3D. That's of course not a behavior we want. We need to add a check in our Area 3D signal to differentiate between enemies and other objects. We can do it easily by creating a script for our enemy and creating a class name in it called enemy. That's all we need in an enemy script for now. Now all we need to do is to check if the body detected by an Area 3D signal is an enemy or not. Now only an enemy and nothing else will be destroyed by the sword on collision. Doing it that way also gives us later the flexibility to apply different functions based on the object we are colliding with. Everything is ready now. You can launch your project and test it out. All the files for the project are available on my coffee page for free. Make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. In the next episode we will be adding enemy health and interface to show it. See you next time!